Here's our sales data. And we simply want to count based on these categories. And our formula input, when we change it to 100, we want everything to instantly update. Now, in last video, we saw how to do this with the count ifs function. But in this video, we want to see how to use the fabulous frequency function to create our report. We'll also get to see the let function. The first thing we need to do is find the max value in the sales column. Now, this is an Excel table, so with my downward pointing black arrow, I click at the top of the column. That puts the table name and the field name in square brackets. Max will tell us what the biggest number is. Now, we need to calculate the upper limit of the last category, so we'll use ceiling math. We'll look at the max number. Comma. The significance is going to be our increment of 250. That means ceiling math will round up to the nearest 250. Now, the beauty of this is now we have, based on this data set, the upper limit of the last category, and we'll never have any numbers that are greater than that number. Now, the number of bins, we take the last upper limit and divide it by our increment. So when we start out, we have four categories. Now, when we use the frequency function, we need four upper limits. So here, we're going to create the upper limits for each category. This is different than count ifs, where we had to put in the lower and upper limit. However, when we use the sequence function to create the four upper limits, these upper limits will be included if they show up in the data set. So it's a less than or equal to upper limit. Now for rows, we want four rows, comma. We don't have any columns, comma. The start, that's the first upper limit, comma. And our increment or step is 250. Close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, it spills the results. Now when we did count ifs in our last video, we had the same upper limits, but they weren't included because that was our goal. If a 250 shows up here, it's going to be counted in this first category. Now the rest is quite easy. Equals frequency. This is an array function. The data array, there's all the sales, comma. The bins, those are the upper limits. And when I entered this formula, it spilled the results down the column. That top cell, cell F8, that's the only cell that holds the formula. The spilled range operator says, hey, from that cell where the formula lives, get everything that spills. And that's our formula. Close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, it's going to spill. But why is there a fifth category? Well, frequency always has been polite. It creates an extra category just in case the person who created these upper limits created an upper limit for the last category that was actually smaller than a data point in our data set. So the last category is actually counting sales greater than the last upper limit. But guess what? Our ceiling math function over here, since that last upper limit will always be bigger than any data point in our data set, we don't need this last row here. So in the top cell, you can see the formula lives there. Any of the spilled results below are grayed out. So we come back to the top cell, F2. And I want to exclude the last row by using the index function. There's the values. But I really I don't want to exclude the last row. I want for row number to simultaneously get 1, 2, 3, 4. So we use the sequence function for rows. We'll put 4. If I leave out all the remaining arguments, the default Right here, if I highlight row number and hit the F9 key, the default is to increment by 1. Now notice this is array syntax. Semicolon means go down a row. So when we have this array in row number, it tells index to simultaneously get the first, second, third, and fourth row, which is exactly what we want. Control Z, close parentheses, and Enter. Now there is an alternative. If I copy frequency and come down here and highlight four cells in advance in the active cell, I'm going to hit F2, type an equal sign, Control V. I can enter this the old fashioned way, Control Shift Enter, thus truncating that last bin. When I use Control Shift Enter, those curly brackets are put in automatically. The problem with this and the beauty of the spilled array is if I change one of the numbers, this 
accommodates and updates, but this one doesn't. Control Z. Now we have our counts or our frequencies, and we want to be explicit. So the person looking at this report knows we have the upper limits here. And in the label, I put upper limit included. If you want to be more explicit, we can just copy this, Control C. We could create a category, text label. So I'll say the actual sale number has to be less than or equal to, in double quotes, and I'll join it to that sequence. I guess I better put an equal sign. And now that'll spill a slightly more explicit label. Now, this one is correct, but these ones actually have a lower limit. But if you wanted to include the lower limit on these three, that would be even more explicit. And the way frequency works, not only is it polite by creating that extra category for everything above the last limit, the lower limit counts everything below. There is no lower limit when we use frequency on the first category. So if we wanted to amend this, right after the equal sign, I'm going to say if. And I'm going to create a logical test based on the sequence 1 to 4. And I'm going to say, hey, when you're equal to 1, comma, the value of true is going to be just this single category. Sales less than or equal to the increment, which for our first category is the upper limit. Otherwise, and we'll amend this sequence, rows. And for the lower limit, comma, we don't need columns. The start is going to be 0. And the step or increment is 250. And then I join it, and we'll have our variable in the middle. And the lower limit is not included when you use frequency, so no equal sign. And that means the sale has to be greater than the lower limit and less than or equal to the upper limit. I come to the end, close parentheses, and that formula, when I hit Enter, will spill, giving us the first correct category and the remaining with the lower and upper. I'm curious, what do you guys do when you do frequency? Do you do it like this, or do you have a label like this? Now, we did it in a bunch of steps, which is the way I usually do it when I'm doing frequency distributions. But we could get fancy here. Take all of these formula inputs and put them into a single formula using the let function. Now, I want to hide all these columns. So I'm going to highlight, right click, hide. And in cell K10 equals let. Now, let allows you to create the name of a variable, then the name value, and then in subsequent arguments, we can create as many variables as we want. And at the end, we make our calculation. I'm going to use Alt-Enter, Sales, comma. That's the name of this column, because we'll have to use it a number of times. Let is great, because once it accesses a particular element or makes a calculation, it stores it and uses it over and over instead of re-referencing or recalculating. Comma, increment will be the name of the second variable. That's the input there. Comma, Alt-Enter. I'm going to say last up limit. That's the last upper limit. Comma, and we'll use ceiling math, max. And look at this. Here's the sales variable right in the drop down. So I'm going to hit tab, close parentheses, comma, the significance. That's increment. And look at that. There's our variable tab. Close parentheses, comma, Alt-Enter. I'm going to say number of bins is the name of our next variable, comma, last. And there's our variable. That's the 1,000 in this particular case. And we're going to divide it by the increment. There's our variable tab, comma, Alt-Enter. We're going to have to have the sequence, 1 to whatever. So comma, sequence. NO for number of bins, and there it is. Close parentheses. Then we need our lower limits using sequence in rows, number of bins. We skip over columns. The start in, I'm going to hard code 0 in, because we're never going to have any values less than 0, comma, the step, increment, close parentheses, comma. And then we're going to do, I'm going to say up limits. These will be the upper limits. Sequence, there's our number of bins, comma, comma, increment, comma, increment. Now, 
let sometimes is tricky because we haven't tested any of this. At any time, you can type a comma. And there it is. It says calculation or name. We can try our upper limits, close parentheses, and see if they're working. That's working. Sequence, we could test that. That better be 1 to 4. Lower limits. So everything's working, F2. Now, very carefully, I'm going to backspace. We still have some more variables, so Alt-Enter. And we'll do our categories, comma, if. We'll use our variable sequence is equal to 1. Then we want, in double quotes, whatever the sale is, it better be less than or equal to the first upper limit, which is our increment. Otherwise, we need both the lower limits and join it to, in double quotes, so the sale is going to be greater than and simultaneously less than or equal to the upper limits. Whoops. And double quotes, ampersand. There's our upper limits. Now close parentheses, and I probably made an error there somewhere, so I think I'll check comma, control V. OK, that's looking good. F2. Then we need frequency, the frequency function, sales variable. That's our data. The bins, only the upper limits. And we don't want frequency's last limit, so we'll use index, comma, and then the variable sequence tab. Alt, Enter. Now for our final variable, that'll be the final report. And our goal is to mash these two together side by side. And so I'm going to use the if function in logical test argument. In array syntax, I want to simultaneously choose those two columns. One represents value of true, comma. The comma means go over a column in array syntax, since we want the two columns side by side. Zero represents value if false, close curly bracket. Value if true, category variable, comma. Value if false, frequency variable, close parentheses. Now, we used if with this 1 and 0. We could have equally used choose here. But it will simultaneously get both of those columns, comma, Alt, Enter, and report. When I hit Enter, that is amazing. If I change the increment up here, instantly it updates. If I change an input value or add new records below, everything's updating. All right, that's a little fun with the let function. We saw how to do the frequency function and index to pick all of the categories except for the last one. We saw how to use sequence. And we saw how to create two different types of text labels. So we have exactly the upper and lower limits for each bin. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out some other frequency distribution videos, check out these videos.